In this video, I'm testing out the Braun Easy Prep food processor, so let's get started. The Braun Easy Prep food processor comes with a 550 watt motor. The base is both lightweight and compact with added cord storage. It comes with an 8 cup work bowl designed with an easy click interlock system. The one size wide mouth feed tube lets you put in larger items to slice or shred. Put anything smaller or thinner in the tube will tilt it sideways causing uneven slicing. So you would need to pack the food into the feed tube to get those nice even slices. It comes with a double-edged rubber spatula which I think is great. One side is flexible to get in between gaps and the other side is flat and a bit more rigid for scraping the work bowl. I was able to scrape off 90% of the food from inside the work bowl including all around the edges, in between the lines. The flexible side of the spatula was able to get into those tight in between gaps especially on the lid and pull all the food out so you're not wasting any food and I've said this before in all my videos the smallest things make the biggest difference to me. The drive shaft is detachable which needs to be put in place first before you place the work bowl onto the base. The only downside to this is every time I lift up the work bowl I knock the drive shaft over so I have to remember to lift the work ball a little higher before bringing it towards me. There are two sizes of the reversible slicing and shredding discs. I started with the larger size first to shred some mozzarella cheese. Using speed 2 setting for firmer foods, the one touch buttons do need a bit more pressure applied to get the machine going. The mozzarella shredded beautifully, leaving nothing on the disc and only a small amount on the lid which I've seen happen on almost every food processor I've used. The mozzarella cheese shredded evenly throughout and I took it straight out from the fridge before shredding it. It hasn't been kept in the freezer but it still came out absolutely beautiful, look at that. Moving on to the fine shredding disc where I shredded some mozzarella cheese. Again straight out from the fridge. And only very tiny pieces left on the disc and just look at that beautiful fine shred. Again using speed setting 2. Slightly more trapped under the lid but that's due to the moisture content in the cheddar cheese compared to the mozzarella cheese but I'm not surprised with this, I was expecting it. I do find it's best to stop in between and remove the cheese otherwise it will clump up too much and may affect the shredding performance. And the same goes with any vegetables. Here I tried to shred some cabbage. I let the first one run through as I was doing the second piece because there was a piece stuck on the shredding disc, the second piece wouldn't go through. So you may need to stop in between and just remove any excess pieces before continuing to shred or slice. Here I shredded coarse cabbage. And then I just did a quick fine shred of the cabbage as well just to show you. The larger slicing disc slices up to 4mm thick and the smaller one can do up to 2mm thick slices. Because of the wide mouth feed tube you want to pack it as much as you can to get some nice even slices like I've done here with two baby cucumbers. I'll also slice some firm tomatoes and even some small bell peppers. Using speed setting 1 for the softer vegetables will get you the best results. 
I started with the smaller slice of first and here are the baby cucumbers. Which came out beautiful. Look at the even slices because we packed the feed tube. And the tomatoes, I was very impressed with how well the tomatoes turned out. Just look at those even slices. And then the bell peppers. Obviously because of the awkward shape of the bell pepper with all the ridges and it's not a smooth round shape, you're not going to get those circular slices as well but it still did a really good job slicing them. And I used the larger 4mm slicer for potatoes using speed 2 because the potatoes are a bit more firmer, they need a bit more power. But just take a look at how well these potatoes sliced. Literally within 10 seconds, that was so impressive. I absolutely love how well this food processor slices. Chopping vegetables using the cutting blade was a little disappointing, giving me mostly uneven chopped veggies even though I left more than enough room for the vegetables to move around the bowl. Using the pulse mode gives you better control so you can see how the texture is. Since the carrots are harder, I did try it on speed 1 to see if it would make a difference, but it didn't. And I also attempted cauliflower rice. Peppers left behind a few large pieces. The carrots were chopped into all sizes from teeny tiny to large chunks. And my cauliflower rice ended up a little bit too mushy with some rather large floret pieces left behind. The amount of time it takes to prep the veggies and then cut them into one inch pieces before adding them to the food processor it actually would have been much faster for me just to chop everything with a knife I think. So the chopping blade would be more suitable for chopping nuts or biscuits or even making breadcrumbs but if you're hoping to make a nice presentable salsa I would skip using the food processor. When using the dough blade, the manual does say to add flour first and then add water to it through the feed tube. Now, for some reason I can never get the consistency right. I always end up with a sticky mess when I do it like this. I always end up adding more flour and then my dough recipe has kind of increased a little bit. Instead, I like to add my liquid first, then add my flour make a little hole and add my yeast and then process it on speed 2 from processing dough it's recommended to do it for 30 seconds and then stop for a while before continuing again this will prevent the unit from overheating and if you find the dough is still dry you can always add a little bit more liquid to it It's a good idea to place a hand on top of the unit as well because the dough will cause it to vibrate quite a bit. I prefer to add more water at a time rather than have sticky dough and needing to add more flour because then that just increases the volume of the dough and then throws the recipe off a little. So here now you can see that I have a nice consistency with the dough. I am going to re-knead it by hand. I'm not going to do it again in the bowl. Once it's formed into a ball, it will cause the food processor to vibrate quite a bit so it's better to knead it by hand for a couple of more minutes until you get your nice smooth texture of dough. So overall it's a great food processor. I absolutely love how it slices and grates vegetables and cheeses. I'm not too keen on chopping vegetables in it though. It's faster to do it by hand. 
but it would be great for making breadcrumbs for example. The dough blade is a bonus but only to mix and form dough. It's not for kneading as the unit does become quite unstable due to the impact of the dough moving around the work bowl but it does take away half the job. You can't process continuously for a long time so if you have a large quantity you will need to stop and start often to prevent the unit from overheating. The base is lightweight making it easy to move on and off your counter but its compact size does make it possible to keep it on your counter if you intend to use it more often. But again you are going to need to find somewhere to store the two discs and also the blade because it doesn't come with a storage case. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed watching my video. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to give this video a like and I hope to catch you in my next video.